we are live and the reason you can't see me right now is because I am on incredibly slow internet. Uh, I'm down here in Puerto Rico. My download speed is great, 250 megabits per second. My upload speed is hovering around 2.5 megabits per second. And if I put moving things on the screen, then uh, my, my video uses more data and I'm afraid it's going to freeze up. So I'm going to try to not show myself as much as possible, um, but knock out this critique that's on emotional images. We have some awesome images today. And if you'd like to be a part of the next critique, I think I've come up with something that's pretty interesting. I wanna see your luckiest photograph. You can go right now to fstoppers.com slash contests and upload your luckiest photograph. Make sure that you put in the description what makes it the luckiest photograph and uh, uh, the, the highest rated image and one random uh, image will win a free tutorial from fstoppers.com slash store. Both of these links are in the description of this video. If you're watching this right now live on fstoppers, click over to YouTube and you can join the uh, live chat. Now, I am here by myself and I'm trying to manage a computer, an iPad, a live stream, horrible internet all at the same time. So I'm going to just a little bit be able to jump in and kind of see what everybody's saying in the live chat, but I'm going to try to uh, power through this here. This is the highest rated image and the winner of one of the tutorials by Chase Wilson. And I'm just going to quickly read um, what he said about this image. He said, this was shot at a barn that was recently left vacant. And I've been wanting to shoot this scene like this for over a year, but I haven't been able to find a barn that would make a good composition. So when this came up, I jumped on it and managed to pull it off with just two days. Uh, we cut out the guts of a cheap lantern and taped an 8200 inside. That is a uh, cheap, relatively cheap flash. And to get the light streaks inside and outside the barn, we used three fog, fog machines going. It was mostly lit with one Einstein. The shot was with a 35 millimeter lens with an anamorphic adapter. Very interesting. Um, Chase has uploaded some images in the past, uh, very planned out, cinematic, uh, you know, full of story and mystery. It really makes you think. All of his images, are, they're kind of wide. Um, they have a lot of detail going on and a lot of thought has been put into the planning and lighting and everything. And I think this is my favorite image of the critique, and uh, it has it has gotten the highest rating from the community as well. So uh, congrats there, Chase. If I had to rate this, I think I would give this at least four stars. Um, you know, I'm definitely on the fence between a four and a five star image. I'm not sure what I would do to make it better. Maybe you could say there could be a little bit more detail. Uh, you know, in some of the trees, maybe I'd like to see a little bit more ominous of a sky or something, but something's really perfect about the, uh, the simplicity of this image really works. And if there was too much going on, you really wouldn't focus on the people in the barn. And that's really what this is all about. So, uh, in terms of emotion, I feel like this is great. I don't know exactly what emotion each of you is going to feel by by looking at this, but I think that's kind of the point. Uh, they tell these stories, but are they're kind of open-ended, so you may feel totally differently about this than I do. But yeah, look at those light streaks coming out of those holes on the broad side of the barn. That is wild. I didn't even notice that until right now. Awesome, awesome photograph. Let's go over to this one here. And I'm also trying to pull these images up on a computer at the exact same time so that uh, I can read what people have done. This shot was by Angela Perez. And uh, let me read through this real quick. This is part of a series that I created when I wanted to reflect dark emotions of internal suffering without doing a dark photo. People often associate darkness with moodiness and I wanted to do it in the 
opposite and try to showcase mood and anguish without the use of a dark color palette. And instead I chose to create a dark mood using completely light color palette and set the mood only via the expression of my subject. I wanted to so showcase anguish, sadness, pain via my subject expression. Basically what you see on the outside doesn't always reflect on how you feel on the inside. Um, I think this is a fantastic image, uh, especially under the genre of emotion. Totally different than the last shot. And I, I feel like it's so much more interesting when you actually get to hear from these photographers what they're thinking. Because I, I haven't read any of these descriptions until right now. Um, and so I feel like I have even more appreciation for this image now that I know what she was trying to accomplish here. I think she definitely did accomplish it. Very unique looking model. Very unique. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, it feels like a Tim Burton character or something. Beautiful lighting, very creepy facial expression, and really interesting styling going on here. I'm not even really sure how to critique it. Uh, it's so weird and makes me feel uncomfortable, but I think that's kind of the, the point of this. Uh, if I had to rate this, I'm a little torn with the description and everything. You know, I probably go towards a four. When I just saw this on its own and the way it makes me feel a little uncomfortable and everything, I always think about should this image be in your portfolio? Will it help you book more work? And that on its own makes me kind of push this towards just a three star. Certainly it's still a solid image for your portfolio and everything. I guess I'm just a little bit worried that it's not really clear what this image is for and about and could it turn potential clients off. Um, you know, w with the explanation, I think it makes total sense, but without the explanation, is there any chance that somebody going to your website could go, well, she didn't really make that woman look flattering, even though that was kind of the point of this image. So there's details like that that I think you have to keep in mind uh, before putting stuff on your website. Whereas with this last shot, whoops, with this last shot here, um, even though, you know, there might be some similar emotions going on between the two here, um, I don't think there's any doubt that this image was incredibly well planned out uh, you know, a master photographer with lighting and just, there was a lot of effort that went into this. Whereas with this shot here, there's always the chance that it's just like, oh, is that what that person always looks like? And that's the photo they chose to publish, you know, even though obviously that wasn't the goal of this shot. Next up. It's a pretty interesting photograph. Uh, we, we, have, we have openly mocked images like this in the past. Uh, we, what, what do we call it? Um, oh, and this is by the same photographer. Interesting, Chase Wilson. Okay, had no idea until right now. Um, but we have openly mocked images with like white guys in the kneeling position with fake blood and like knives in their chest and arrows in their chest and like screaming out to the heavens and stuff. Mike Kelly called it something like um, simulated sorrow or something. <laughs> I don't remember what he called it, but it was a perfect uh, name. I think this is definitely done better than a lot of those. Uh, and in case you guys can't really tell, this is yarn and fabric, uh, so certainly very unique. Um, the actual hole in his chest is probably my, the biggest problem that I have with this. It, it looks a little just like felt fabric, you know, and maybe that's the entire point of this, and so you're saying like, uh, yeah, obviously, uh, obviously, Lee, but, um, I don't know. What I do love about this image is the background color. And I know that might be weird to a lot of you, but uh, I think I might have the... 
I might want to just make it a pure white background, but there's just a little bit of flat cream color over this entire image. And I feel like that really makes this image all come together. I think that if this was totally white, it wouldn't be nearly as powerful as it is. Let me read uh, what Chase has to say here. This is an image I made for a friend, Cody Reif's first solo album, The Art of Suffering. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> kind of similar to what Mike Kelly calls these types of images. This album is him working through the fact that he's not going to be allowed to see his son ever since he was born uh, because of legal problems. I use the craft materials like felt and yarn for his heart and the blood uh, to try to bring his young son's presence to the image. He wanted to shoot it a little bit more moody and dark, but I persuaded him to go lighter and more open so it would be more naked. Very interesting. For me personally, especially when I compare this to Chase's other image, I lean towards giving this uh, three stars uh, rather than four, just because of the subject matter itself. Uh, n not because there's a problem with the photography. I feel like uh, the lighting on this and the um, concept is very unique. Um, but just kind of the subject matter overall, when I compare this to Chase's other shot, in my opinion, there's no real comparison. Uh, community gives this 3.14. And I don't know if I mentioned uh, this other one. Let me see if I can find it again. The highest rated image was a 3.47. This image is super cool, super cool. This was taken by Janos Lakatos. Um, and all he put in the description was waiting for the quarantine to end. I wish he had given us a little bit more information about how this was taken. And guys, if you do submit to future critiques, make sure that you um, let us know how you took the images, how you lit them, how the concept came about. Don't write too much or I won't be able to read it all, but I'm really interested to know how he got the water reflection on that back wall. I would imagine, you know, photoshopping in the underwater scene into the glass probably wouldn't be too difficult. I'm trying to think of how you would do it. Um, maybe you put a bed sheet over the window. I don't even know if that's necessary, but maybe you do. And uh, you, you could, I don't even know if you have to do this, but you could flash some uh, blue gelled lights through that sheet. I would just imagine because it's water, you would want it to be a little bit more um, uniform rather than having like direct harsh sunlight coming through. Now, if you look at the model, it does look like soft light is hitting her from the front. But if you look at some of the window frames, the edges of the window frames are pretty white in certain areas that don't really look totally realistic. Uh, if this was truly underwater, I don't think you'd see those, those white highlights coming from the sides. But the, uh, the color toning on this is fantastic. The, I feel like what makes this entire image is that back wall with the water reflection on the wall the uh, lifesaver or whatever it's called back there. I just think it's great. And it's, it's so simple. And you know what I am just now noticing? I can't believe I am just now noticing this. The floor is made of water. I've looked at this image for a while now and there's dripping water off of the uh, keyboard. I had no idea. That is so funny, I completely overlooked that. Wow, okay, so more, more work was put into this than I thought. Um, and now I like it even more. Wow, really, really cool image. I'm not even sure if I have that much of a critique. I, I mean, maybe it would be cool if you could add a little bit more splashing to the water, maybe down near her feet or something to really make it clear that uh, that's not just a shadow down there and that is actually water but uh super cool and i'm interested i am interested to know 
what background plate was used? I, th I think, I think the uh, whale was added after the fact. But the water itself, with, with those bubbles right up against the pane, the window pane, I feel like that looks really, really good. Whale looks a little fakey, but the, the bubbles look great. And I'm just curious, how do you get that? Because if you go to a aquarium, I don't, I don't recall seeing bubbly water like that. So it really makes it feel like there's a storm or choppy water out there. I think it's great. Uh, I give it four stars. Community gives it 3.12. Damn it, you guys are rough. Next up, another type of emotion here. It's not going to be all uh, simulated sadness. Let me see if I can find this on the website and see if there's a description here. Angela Perez took this. The title of this image is The Fashion Circus. It was a, por a portrait that I created to try to depict the circus that we call the fashion industry. I completely agree. I wanted to create a bold, bright image that was in your face and makes you feel joy by simply looking at it. This was shot with a 16-inch gridded beauty dish for the main light and a small speed light behind the model pointed towards the background to create a halo effect behind the model that will create a grow of, um, excuse me, a glow to separate her from the backdrop. The bold colors that, are, the bold colors and unconventional makeup was all intentional and meant to showcase that when it comes to art and fashion, there are no rules. Just continue to express yourself no matter how bold and unconventional it might seem to others. Now, I told you guys during this critique that I didn't just want to see portraits of people smiling. Uh, yes, you could say that is an emotion, but uh, that wasn't going to cut it for this critique. But this woman's expression, I think it's a woman. I'm not going to go down that path. I always get in trouble when I do this. But this person's expression is so fantastic. Man, this is so much more than your average smiling portrait. And uh, I don't know. I, I, it's very hard to overlook this image. And so, in my opinion, it had to make this critique. Uh, the lighting is fantastic. I love what they've done with her dark skin. We have really bright highlights on the front. And I'd love to know what they did, what Angela did with the retouching here because, I mean, it looks, I'll zoom in a little bit here. I don't have a super high res image, but um, it looks like some fairly heavily, heavy retouching has been done. But I love the contrast on her face here. You have that, those beautiful, pure white highlights on the front of her face that, that go to pure black down the sides of her face and under her chin. Um, and then all the crazy colors with the makeup and everything. I think it looks really awesome. Um, I probably would, I'm in between a three and a four star. Again, I feel like the photography is fantastic. The subject matter itself is just so wacky that again, I start to kind of hesitate and go like, oh, is this a, a classic image that should always live on your website? I don't know. I, I think maybe it should live on your website within uh, a subheading of fashion photography or quirky portraits or something like that. Uh, without the description, again, it, you know, it might turn some potential clients off uh, because they just don't know what the heck they're looking at. But I think it's a really cool shot. And uh, the community gives it 2.95. This shot's pretty crazy, um, and I have not read the description. Let's see if there is a description here. Uh, taken in Tana Datar in Indonesia at the Paku Jawi bull race event, a jockey tries to control two running bulls through a flooded paddy field. So there's a lot going on with this image, obviously, and Aspects of it are absolutely amazing. I mean, just 
overall, what's going on here with the amount of mud that is being kicked up? I mean, look at that wall of mud that goes from edge to edge of this shot. It's pretty amazing. The guy's facial expression, I'm sure, I'm sure people are going to be divided here. When I look at this, I am impressed, but at the same time, I feel like this is a show that this guy does every week. And I could be totally wrong. Um, maybe this is a once in a lifetime opportunity and the guy's literally about to die. And oh my gosh, you know, what an amazing moment that you've captured. But it doesn't feel like that to me. And I can't put my finger on exactly why, but it kind of feels like, I don't know, this guy's just an expert and he's kind of hamming it up for the cameras and maybe this has happened again and again and again through this exact spot and the photographer knew exactly where to stand because a lot of people are doing this exact same thing. I don't know. I can't say I've ever seen anything like this in my life. I have been to a bullfight before. I've seen some crazy things. I've never seen this. Um, so maybe it is totally real. But for that reason, I kind of lean towards giving this three stars rather than the four or the five. But um, wacky, wacky shot for sure. Next up. So again, I didn't feel like this was a normal portrait of a girl smiling, and that's why I included it in this critique. Uh, Senkit Kuntale uh, took this, and he calls it Bliss. She is the potter's daughter laughing at a joke that her father cracked while I was shooting her portrait. The smile contrasts perfectly to the lifestyle ambience surrounding her. Um, I, I feel like there is so much emotion in this shot. It does not feel like she's laughing at the photographer. It really does look like she's laughing at exactly who she's looking at out of the corner of her eye. And with her hand, you know, back, you know, on her hip or right behind her, it feels like she's kind of got that like, Oh, come on, Dad. And maybe she's too young to even have that type of expression. But that's definitely the emotion that I'm getting from this image. And uh, I don't know. It, re it really stood out to me as well. Now, what would I rate this image? <sighs> I'm in between a three and a four. I'm probably in between a three and a four on most of these images. I feel like in a series of other similar images, maybe in similar locations, maybe I'd give it the four stars. On its own, without the description, just on your website, I'm probably leaning more towards three stars on this, but I do really like it. And with the description of her kind of responding to her dad's joke, uh, I like it even more. Community gives it 3.24, that's interesting. So the community liked this one a little bit more than some of the other images. Now this is a little bit more up my alley. I was a wedding photographer for over 10 years and uh, capturing images like this, you know, were always the goal, but very, very difficult to pull off. Especially outdoor images without a tent. You don't have anywhere to bounce light and you're either going to have to deal with ambient light, which is very difficult at times, or direct flash, which can kind of kill the mood of a lot of images. And uh, this image I feel like is working so well because we've got that nighttime uncovered shot, but lit what I believe is naturally with all of these sparklers and you know, overhead string lights. I think this shot is amazing. Um, something to keep in mind with wedding photography is how timeless an image is. And also, not necessarily how timeless it is, because you, you, you could have something on your website for a few years and then pull it off. But 
What will potential clients, and by potential clients, I mean potential brides, what will they think when they see an image? And there are certain details that brides notice that as just a man, I never notice. And as a photographer, I don't notice. Um, some of them being like the way the bride looks or the way the groom looks or what is she wearing or what type of decorations are there. All these things that I really don't care about as, I mean, I, I care about how she looks, but you get what I'm saying. I just don't notice some of these details. This dress, I, I don't know anything about this style of dress. To me, it feels... It feels a little foreign to me. I don't know if this is true at all. It, it, this vibe just kind of, it, it feels like this is taking place in Italy or something. That's probably not true at all. But I look at this and it feels timeless even though I feel like she's wearing a bit of a strange wedding dress. I am probably the last person that should be <laughs> critiquing uh, wedding dress trends because I really don't know and I don't care. But normally, if a if a bride is showing her stomach, I'd be like, uh, I don't know if you could put that in your portfolio because it's just going to offend 20% of the brides that come to your website, um, and they're going to be thinking about that rather than how amazing the lighting is or how amazing the emotion is or whatever. But something about this feels very classic to me. I don't, again, I can't put my finger on it, but maybe it's just that this girl's expression is, is so fantastic. The lighting is great. Her face is almost right in the middle of this image, which really isn't, isn't the best for um, composition, but I feel like it works here. And to be perfectly honest, you know, if, if you were to print this, maybe you would crop in a little bit. Um, but let's see, what would I do? Something like that. Maybe I like a little bit more. This dude's hand in the background right behind her head, I don't love. But yeah, I would definitely crop in if it were my shot. But I don't know. I absolutely love this image. I'm going to give it four stars just for the emotion itself and the lighting. I love it. I've also noticed that it may not actually be nighttime yet. If you look behind this tree back there, you can see some sky. So uh, I don't know how much the sparklers are doing versus the natural light outside, but I love this image. As a wedding photographer, I think it's fantastic. And Joshua didn't really say anything about it. He says, bride hoisted above the dance floor mid-sparkler celebration. And I believe this is the final image of the critique. And I will, I will go ahead and give this one the uh, random winner uh, of a f-stoppers tutorial at fstoppers.com slash door. If you guys have won, you can uh, send me a private message on uh, F stoppers and let me know which tutorial you would like and I'll make sure I send that right over to you. Let me see if I can pull up the description of this image. This was taken by Bruce Grant and he's titled it, Come Here Sherry, It's Your Turn. And he says, we had just finished up a makeup shoot and decided we wanted to have a little fun. Sherry was not in the shoot, but since she never likes being in front of the camera, I wanted to capture what we, what we sometimes see off camera. So he isn't totally clear here, but it sounds like maybe Sherry is the makeup artist um, for this other shoot that was going on. And then he just kind of took this off the cuff after the other shoot. And oh my gosh, talk about emotion. Uh, this might be, I mean, this is up there with the uh, bride shot that we just saw as some of the most emotion. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know which one I would say has more emotion, but there's just so much detail and character in this woman's face. 
interesting hair going across the front of her forehead like that. But then, you know, to take a picture of somebody with their eyes closed, you would think it, you know, it, it wouldn't work very often, but it's definitely working in this shot. Huge smile. You know, the gap in the teeth, again, adds so much character to this image. The lighting, I'm trying to figure out exactly what they have going on here. It looks like a medium-sized light right above the camera. We've got a very symmetrical shadow coming straight down under her nose. And then, I don't know if this is coming across on YouTube with my incredibly low bit rate, but the black and white conversion is awesome. We've got a pure white background, which makes your eye go straight to her face. And then again, just super high contrast, but still tons of detail. Lots of pure whites, lots of total blacks. And uh, I think this image is fantastic. I give this at least four stars. And you know, when you talk about what should be in your portfolio, I feel like this fits in anyone's portfolio. I feel like the, the, this image is just kind of so clear what it is, what this photographer is capable of doing. And uh, I love it. I love it. You know, I, I think if you were trying to book a really high paying celebrity photo shoot job and you needed to, a, a lot of magazines, they don't want to hire you to shoot a celebrity or, you know, some big CEO if you don't already have a high profile person in your portfolio because they just want to make sure that you're capable of rising to the occasion, you know how to act around people like that, and you, you know, you're not going to mess the shoot up. But this image, I feel like it could fit in with other images of people that you recognize, and this image would stand out just as much, even though Sherry is not a celebrity. I don't know, I just, I just think this image has tons of character, and I love it. Community gives this one 3.31 stars, and that wraps up this critique. Let's see if we can cut back to me one time. I, I think we went the entire time without uh, freezing, but it's probably about to freeze any second because now I'm watching the bit rate go up. It was at like 2.5 before when the images were still, and now we're hitting three, so who knows? If you guys would like to be a part of the next critique, uh, head over to fstoppers.com slash contest. Once again, we want to see your luckiest images ever. So obviously, you know, if you were shooting wildlife and you got the perfect shot of the eagle going down and getting the fish or whatever, that's obviously luck. But I think there are so many other images that are lucky as well, where you plan to do something and that totally failed, but then you decided to shoot over here and it was way better or the model didn't show up and so you had to shoot Sherry, the makeup artist, and oh my gosh, the client loved that shot better than they loved, the, you know, with the thing, or maybe even a shot where it took you, you know, a split second to shoot it and you never thought that it would be that popular, but then you sold it and you made a ton of money and it was just a totally lucky job. We wanna hear your stories, so make sure that you write in the description of all your, of your submissions. You can submit up to three different images what makes your images lucky, and uh, we will see you soon. David, our right-hand man at F-Stoppers, is coming down to Puerto Rico. It's funny, he's coming down here, but Patrick's not. He's still working in Charleston. He's coming down here uh, Monday of next week, and so he will be critiquing with me the, uh, the luckiest photo shoots. And head over to fstoppers.com slash store if you would like to uh, see which tutorials you would like if you are the lucky winner next week. Guys, I will see you soon. <laughs> Patrick, is he just sent me a super chat. He says, while you're critiquing photos, I'm ripping seamless paper holders out of the attic. I have to say, I am very thankful that I am not in Charleston right now because Patrick and David have just been demolishing our studio and uh, I've been playing lots of video games. So I owe you one, guys. I will see you all soon.